Glenn Simpson, Crime in Progress, Inside the Steel Dossier and the Fusion GPS Investigation of Donald Trump. In this fascinating account of political intrigue, Crime in Progress takes you on a journey through the investigations carried out by Fusion GPS, a small intelligence firm, as they delved into President Donald Trump's ties to Russia. Founded by Glenn Simpson and Peter Fritsch, Fusion GPS uncovered a web of questionable business dealings, organized crime connections, and potential foreign influence on a sitting president. This summary will guide you through the key findings of the investigations, the origins of the infamous Steele dossier, and the implications of the suspicious relationships that emerged between the Trump campaign and Russia. Unraveling Trump's Russian Ties In today's political climate, opposition research is a standard practice that involves delving into the backgrounds of opponents to uncover potentially detrimental information. Fusion GPS, a private intelligence firm founded by Glenn Simpson and Peter Fritsch, built its reputation on analyzing complex documents and uncovering hidden facts to satisfy clients in various fields. In 2015, intrigued by Donald Trump's curious relationship with Russia and recognizing his similarity to Mitt Romney, the only political campaign Fusion GPS had worked on thus far, the firm set out to investigate Trump. Funded by conservative publication The Washington Free Beacon and supported by billionaire Paul Singer, Fusion GPS aimed to expose information that would impede Trump's quest for the Republican presidential nomination. As events unfolded, however, the research spiraled into an extensive governmental inquiry, ultimately involving a sitting president and his potential connection to a foreign adversary. Unmasking Trump's Dubious Deals Simpson and Fritch's investigation into Trump's business ventures revealed a pattern of grand announcements followed by project failures, resulting in numerous lawsuits. They also found connections to organized crime, money laundering, and suspect ties to Russia. Despite their concerning discoveries, the information didn't make waves during the election campaign as it was overshadowed by the fervor of debates. As Trump's nomination became increasingly likely, Fusion realized they needed to continue their work, but required a new client to fund it. Diving deep into Trump's past, investigators Simpson and Fritch were astounded by the vast number of lawsuits he faced throughout his career. A discernible pattern began to emerge, Trump would announce colossal projects, amass significant investments, yet ultimately face project failure followed by lawsuits from disgruntled investors. Trump's defense was that he was merely a licensor and not responsible for the development itself. A notable case was the Trump Soho project in Manhattan, under investigation for fraud in 2011. Consequently, Trump had to return around $3 million to investors, money he, along with his children Don Jr. and Ivanka, procured through inflating sales figures during the project's infancy. Simpson and Fritch pondered if Trump was indeed a scam artist. Furthermore, their investigation raised numerous questions related to organized crime, money laundering, and concerning associations with Russia. Trump's business partner, convicted felon Felix Sater, drew investigators' attention due to complex connections between Russia and his company, Bayrock. Fusion hypothesized the involvement of a Kremlin-linked figure in a $50 million payment that Bayrock received from an enigmatic Icelandic company, claiming Trump as the ultimate beneficiary. Their inquiry led them through a maze of similar cases, uncovering alarming information that compelled them to act urgently. Nevertheless, their findings barely made a ripple during the election campaign, overshadowed by the spectacle of political debates. With Trump's nomination rapidly approaching, fusion researchers knew they had to carry on, but would need a new client, someone outside the Republican camp, to finance their efforts. Unraveling the Steel Dossier on Super Tuesday during the 2016 Republican primaries, it became clear that Donald Trump would emerge victorious. Fusion, a research firm, connected with the Democratic Party through Mark Elias, a prominent attorney, to investigate ties between Trump and Russia. Fusion enlisted the help of former British spy Christopher Steele, who uncovered unsettling information suggesting Russia had extensive leverage over Trump. Although Steele dutifully reported his findings to the FBI, he was met with inexplicable silence. 
As Donald Trump's victory in the Republican primaries became apparent on Super Tuesday, March 1, 2016, Fusion, a research agency, reached out to the Democratic Party, offering to assist with research. They found a receptive audience in the law firm Perkins Qua, connecting with high-powered Democratic attorney Mark Elias. Elias was intrigued by Fusion's findings regarding a potential connection between Russia and Trump's campaign. Reports suggested that Russia had leverage over Paul Manafort, an experienced political advisor appointed to Trump's team. To continue the investigation for their new client, Fusion sought international reporting by enlisting the help of Christopher Steele, a former British spy and owner of the London-based consulting firm Orbis. Steele's groundbreaking initial report, dated June 20, 2016, would become known as the Steele Dossier. The dossier unveiled staggering information, Russia, explicitly endorsed by Putin, had worked on fostering a relationship with Trump for five years. The goal was to fracture the alliance of Western countries and elevate Russia's status on the world stage. The dossier also alleged that Russia possessed compromising material on the future U.S. president, a videotape depicting Trump watching prostitutes urinate on a hotel bed once occupied by Barack and Michelle Obama. This so-called compromat could be used to blackmail Trump, leaving both Manafort and Trump vulnerable to Russian influence. Fusion's partners, Glenn Simpson and Peter Fritsch, were initially skeptical, but Steele firmly vouched for his sources. He insisted that the intelligence was solid and, thus, warranted reporting to the FBI due to the issues bearing on national security. Steele contacted Michael Gaeta, an FBI liaison, on July 5, 2016. Gaeta expressed gratitude for the information and vowed to take the matter further. However, Steele encountered nothing but silence thereafter, leaving the world to speculate in the void. Unraveling Trump-Putin Ties The increasingly obvious bond between Trump and Putin caught the attention of the public and intelligence agencies alike during the 2016 election. As Putin encouraged a Trump presidency, the Republican Party started to lean towards pro-Russia policies, exemplified by Trump's dismantling of support for Ukraine rebels. Concurrently, embarrassing leaks of Democratic Party emails revealed Russian involvement, leading to significant resignations. Trump's public invitation for Russian interference in locating Clinton's missing emails stunned many, including Steele, who was compelled to check on the progress of his dossier with the FBI. While the CIA director asserted that Russia was behind the Clinton email hacks, the agency faced silence from Russian intelligence, even as Putin fired his chief of staff. Meanwhile, the press slowly began to uncover the connections between Trump and Russia. Media Games Before Trump's Victory With concerns growing about a potential Trump presidency, Fusion and Steele tried to force information about Trump's ties to Russia into the press. Steele briefed journalists, and initially, only Michael Isakoff's article gained attention. Press coverage referred to email hacks by the Russian government, the explicit Trump video, and Clinton's email scandal. Despite the New York Times suggesting a lack of connection between Trump and Russia, Fusion and Steele remained determined to uncover the truth. In the pre-election months, Fusion partners and Steele were deeply worried about the possibility of Trump ascending to the presidency. Desperate to make the public aware of Trump's alarming connections, they attempted to push related stories into mainstream media coverage. Amidst the escalating urgency, Fusion persuaded Steele to travel to Washington in September 2016 to personally brief journalists on his findings. Despite the importance of anonymity, Steele took this risky step to help expose Trump's links to the Kremlin. However, this task proved challenging as journalists found themselves unable to verify the claims without endangering Steele's sources. One story did surface from Michael Isakoff of Yahoo News, reporting on the links between Trump adviser Carter Page and the Kremlin. The article did create a stir, with Page having to withdraw from his position, but the media's attention quickly shifted elsewhere. October 7 could have turned the tide had it offered a more typical day of news. That afternoon, U.S. intelligence publicly confirmed that Russian government was behind the attempts to disrupt the election. But subsequent news releases changed everything. Trump's explicit video showing him making offensive comments stunned the public. 
Alongside this, WikiLeaks unveiled emails from Clinton campaign chairman, John Podesta. Clearly, Russia showed no signs of stopping its efforts to get Trump elected. In the days leading up to the election, another bombshell arrived. FBI Director James Comey announced the reopening of the investigation into Clinton's email practices, a move that severely impacted her campaign. Shortly after, the New York Times published a story titled, Investigating Donald Trump, FBI Sees No Clear Link to Russia, suggesting the Trump investigation had not yielded results. This contrasting treatment of Clinton created a perception that may have determined the election's outcome. However, Fusion and Steele refused to back down. Their determination persisted with the aim to uncover the unquestionable truth behind Trump's association with Russia. Unraveling Trump's Russian Ties After Donald Trump's election victory, the Fusion team, along with Christopher Steele, felt a strong need to continue investigating his links to Russia. The team's work ended up in the hands of David Kramer, an advisor to Senator John McCain, who discussed the matter with FBI's James Comey. Meanwhile, the U.S. intelligence community released a report on Russia's interference in the election. Ultimately, it was BuzzFeed's publication of Steele's dossier that caught the public's attention, inadvertently putting Steele's and his sources' lives at risk. As Donald Trump won the election on November 8, the Fusion team realized the importance of their investigation on Trump's Russian connections. Although their funding concluded, they resolved to carry on their work pro bono. Christopher Steele, who shared the team's surprise, felt compelled to act too. He confided in his mentor, Sir Andrew Wood, who passed the information discreetly to David Kramer at a security conference. Kramer, an advisor to Senator John McCain, arranged a meeting with James Comey to deliberate on the investigation. Unbeknownst to Steele, Kramer was deeply affected by the report and actively briefed its contents around Washington. Kramer even met with BuzzFeed reporter Ken Bensinger, who managed to photograph the dossier. Concurrently, on January 6, 2017, the U.S. intelligence community, comprising the FBI, NSA, and CIA, released an official report outlining Moscow's efforts to sway the election in Trump's favor. Despite the allegations, Trump dismissed them outright. What captured the public's imagination, however, was BuzzFeed's publication of Bensinger's dossier photos on January 10. The dossier's most controversial claim, the Golden Shower incident, became the center of attention. While Steele never intended for his reports to be public, the unexpected exposure forced him to consider the safety of both himself and his sources, whose lives were now at stake. Unearthing the Hidden Conspiracy Steele, after publishing the dossier, went into hiding, concerned for his sources, while Fusion faced growing scrutiny from Congress. Undeterred, Fusion co-founders, Simpson and Fritch, established the Democracy Integrity Project, attracting funding to continue investigating Trump and his associates. Their efforts included digging into Paul Manafort's connections and examining a potential link between Russia and the NRA. The dismissal of FBI head, James Comey, seemingly confirmed suspicions about Russia's influence on Trump. Although a special counsel investigation commenced under Robert Mueller, Fusion's troubles persisted. Upon releasing the dossier, Steele hid from the public eye, fearing for the safety of one of his sources, a Russian residing in the U.S. fusion was confronted with heightened scrutiny as Republicans in Congress sought to expose a hidden conspiracy within the dossier. The new president's frequent tweets about a witch hunt only added to the fervor. Simpson and Fritch, however, stood undaunted and proceeded with their endeavors. They founded a new company, the Democracy Integrity Project, which allowed philanthropic donors to fund their investigations into Trump and his collaborators. With ample support from concerned tech entrepreneurs, their quest continued. The focus of their probe included Paul Manafort, a former campaign manager with murky ties to Russia and Ukraine, and Maria Budina, a Russian student with suspicious connections to the National Rifle Association. Fusion suspected Russia of funneling money to Trump supporters through the NRA. The commotion surrounding Trump's presidency escalated when he fired FBI head, James Comey, on May 9. 
Widely perceived as an attempt to thwart investigations into his Russian affiliations, Trump first justified the firing with Comey's handling of the Clinton email probe but later conceded it relieved Russian-related pressure. Observers, including Fusion, construed this as evidence of Russian leverage over the president. The investigation didn't cease with Comey's dismissal. On May 17, Deputy Attorney General Rod Rosenstein appointed Robert Mueller, former FBI director, to lead an impartial special counsel inquiry into Russia's involvement in the 2016 election. Despite this, Fusion's problems were far from over. Unraveling the Trump-Russia Saga As the Trump-Russia scandal heated up, the press feverishly reported details like Jared Kushner's back-channel suggestion and the notorious Trump Tower meeting involving Donald Trump Jr. Fusion, the investigative firm behind the much-discussed dossier, faced intense scrutiny from Congress. Senate Judiciary Chairman Chuck Grassley and House Intelligence Committee Chairman Devin Nunes sought to question Fusion's integrity, insinuating that it was the investigative firm that had been played by the Russians. Amidst this chaos, Previous associations with Russian lawyer Natalia Veselnitskaya resulted in an unfortunate coincidence that cast doubts on Fusion's credibility. Fusion's founder Glenn Simpson struggled through multiple investigative committee hearings and a legal battle to protect the firm's bank records. Meanwhile, in August 2018, former Trump lawyer Michael Cohen turned on the president, providing evidence for special counsel Robert Mueller and later being sentenced to three years in prison on a variety of charges. Ultimately, the reporting by Fusion and former British spy Christopher Steele was largely corroborated, and the trio of Simpson, Peter Fritsch, and Steele eagerly anticipated the results of Mueller's investigation. Concealed Truths of Mueller's Report the baffling result of Robert Mueller's report on Trump's alleged collusion with the Russians in the 2016 U.S. election can be attributed to the Justice Department policy and the scope of the investigation. This has raised concerns that similar interference may occur in future elections, with Steele's dossier still holding valid claims. In March 2019, Newly appointed Attorney General William Barr received Robert Mueller's report about Donald Trump's potential collusion with the Russians and obstruction of justice allegations. Contrary to Barr's claim that the report didn't find Trump guilty, Mueller's findings did not completely absolve the president. It validated press reports that confirmed Russia's attempt to influence the election in favor of Trump. Simpson and Fritch, the authors of a book examining the events, offered explanations for the report's inconclusive nature. The primary reason being the Justice Department policy stating that a sitting president cannot be criminally charged, which put the matter outside Mueller's authority. Secondly, Mueller's investigation focused on electoral interference rather than examining the extensive network of connections between Trump and Russia that Fusion and Orbis had endeavored to reveal. In June 2019, Mueller hinted at ongoing FBI investigations into Trump's links with Russia during his congressional testimony. Nevertheless, it's uncertain whether the results of these investigations will ever come to light. In Steele's dossier, the court claims surrounding the substantial Russian effort to aid Trump's victory have been recognized, even though Trump's active involvement remains uncertain. The Compromat story, however, has been elusive to substantiate. Simpson and Fritsch stress that the chances of a repeat episode in future elections cannot be disregarded. They question if effective measures are being implemented to prevent Russia from influencing future U.S. elections. The apprehension they expressed in 2016 remains crucial, highlighting the persistent need for vigilance and action in safeguarding democratic processes. As the story of a crime in progress unfolds, it becomes clear that the investigations into Donald Trump's connections with Russia revealed alarming links and potential foreign influence on the highest office in the United States. While the full extent of these connections and their impact on the 2016 election may never be fully understood, the work of Fusion GPS serves as a stern warning for the future of democracy. The final takeaway from this thrilling saga is that the vulnerabilities exploited in 2016 could still be present today, and it is up to the American public and its institutions to ensure that history does not repeat itself.